Hey, so I wanted to really quickly explain just before we get to the anatomy of a mistake. People are asking sometimes, what is this all about? If you watch my channel a lot, I do advocate that you write down key ideas in a small notebook. I have a video that explains that and why we do it. This class is essentially all of the things that I have written down in more than 10 years of preparing students for the AMC. It is my personal journal that I've kept of things that I thought were noteworthy, interesting, intriguing, that you could make problems out of. And so I've gathered them from various AOPS books, various forums, various contests and things like that. And I just think they're, they're a little bit more upgraded from a basic level of concept. They're interesting little mechanisms or concepts that can help you become faster on the test. So if you were still interested for the Sunday, October 29th classes, uh, the last chance to register for those is today. This video goes out on Saturday the 28th. Uh, you'll need to you know, uh, reach me and set up your registration by midnight Pacific time tonight. I will not be taking registrations on Sunday the day of. Um, I do work 12 hours today on this day. Uh, I'm probably not going to be able to, you know, just sit at my emails and respond the whole time, but I'll do my best to respond to you when I have breaks. Um, and then, you know, of course, at the end of the night. So if you did last chance again for this Sunday, there will, of course, be more time for the next Sunday, which is also the time for international students. If you were interested in those classes, uh, let's go ahead and get to the anatomy of a mistake. And so what I want to talk about here, we, people ask me, how do I avoid making sillies? And I do have a full intent to make a video later that goes into more depth about this. But I wanted to look here at what I'm going to call the anatomy of a mistake. How does it happen? Um, there's many different faucets of that explanation, but one in particular that I will illustrate here. Let's say that you're solving this question number 17 from the 2017 10A. And it says distinct points P, Q, R, and S lie on the circle X squared plus Y squared equals 25. I kind of advocate to interpret as you go. So if they're going to ask us to talk about a circle, maybe we should draw that circle, right? So we come over here, one, two, three, four, five, um, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, approximation. You're not going to get a perfectly exact. By the way, there is no more graph paper allowed on the test. So you're going to have to free draw everything. That's not too great looking, but not really terrible looking either. Uh, so here we go. You've got the circle drawn. It's got a radius of five. You're coming out to five, zero right over here and negative five, zero here. You've got zero, five and negative, uh, zero, negative five here, okay? So then what? Now it says they have integer coordinates. The points P, Q, R, and S are what we're talking about. They have integer coordinates. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, I mean, it means that you go to four, three, because three, four, five right triangles and three, four, both of those points would be there, for instance. So three, four, four, three. There are no more points in the first quadrant that will have integer coordinates. All of these points will reflect negative three, positive four, uh, negative four, positive three. I'm not going to put every point on here, but let's go to negative four, negative three, and add a couple more, and three, negative four for the purpose of the solve process. So negative three, negative four. Okay, so I won't put the fourth quadrant values in there for you to look at. So the distances, it says P, Q, and R, S are irrational numbers. What is the greatest possible value of the ratio P, Q, which is the length of P, Q, over R, S? Greatest possible value. So all we have to do is pick these points. We're trying to maximize value. So you ask yourself, what does that mean? How can I maximize value? Let's say that you're at 8 over 3. How would I make it larger? Well, one way would be to make the numerator larger. I could also make the denominator smaller. 8 over 1 is greater than 8 over 3, and 10 thirds is more than 8 thirds. So there's two things we can do to maximize this ratio for its maximum possible value. I want PQ up, and I want RS down. 
And so you go to work, you say, okay, well, I want to maximize my PQ. How about the RS, minimize it. Okay, let's minimize it. I've got right here is going to be the minimum, right? And if you understand you're going down one over one, that's a 45, 45, 90. So it's just root two. If you want to use distance formula, go for it. But distance formula is based off of Pythagorean theorem anyway. So you've got a root two distance. You go, okay, there can't be anything smaller than that. So it's got to be root two. All right, great. Now I want to maximize PQ. Oh, well, why don't I just use the diameter 10? What's 10 over root two? Five root two. All right, we're in a hurry, guys. We've got to qualify for Amy. We've got to go quick. Five, five root two. Okay. okay, I got it. Oh, okay. And they got you. And some of you who are very well trained probably already know what I did. You might even have picked up on it when I glossed over the reading of it as I was going. What this student has just done is they're in a hurry, they understand the basic concepts, they get what they're supposed to do, and they start going to town on the solve process. And so they come over here and they, they think about the, the fraction and they're like, oh, I want numerator large and denominator as small as possible. And they've got all of that. They drew the graph, they've got the points, they've thought correctly about maximizing PQ and minimizing RS. What is their mistake? Their mistake is they didn't stop to go back and check what were all the requirements in the problem. Go back and read it very carefully before you settle on the answer that's going to give you zero points. Okay, go back and look at it and go, okay, did I do everything? That's what you want to ask. Did I check all the boxes? Distinct points. They are distinct. We made distinct. Okay, we did choose distinct. Now, they lie on the circle. They do. They have an intercoordinates. They do. The distances are irrational. 10 is not an irrational number. 10 is just not. So what would be the largest irrational number? Well, most likely if you came from like, say, let's change color here. If I come from this point to the point over here, you're going to pass right through the origin. It's just going to be a diameter like that. So I probably want to go like something like this point and this point. And so if I do that, use your distance formula, whatever. You can do it either that or you can make a right triangle. It's going to be the same thing. From negative 3x value to 4x value is a distance of 7. And a distance of negative 4 to 3, your y value change is also 7. What is that distance? 7 root 2. And so I put 7 root 2 over root 2. Are they both irrational? They are. Everything in a square root that doesn't simplify is irrational. So the answer is actually seven. And you might be thinking, yeah, but who falls for that trap, right? Who's going to make that mistake? Let's take a look. I've actually got it all queued up here for you. I'm going to clear the drawings. We're going to go to the statistics page. If you go to the 20 of the AMC 10 statistics on the MAA website and you go to, uh, yeah, go ahead and click the statistics page here. And it's loading all slowly. And you go choose one. I'm going to go to 2017. Okay. And I go 10A. And I choose the 10. And I go to down here, the, the drop down menu. You can go to item difficulty worldwide, hit view report. Let's go down to problem 17. There it is at the bottom of the screen. What do we notice? We notice that the correct answer only has 7.86%. And the number one answer of all answers except omit was the trap answer, was the trap answer. So how did that mistake happen? Do you think it just happens in a vacuum? It's just random? No, the mistake is by design. And the test makers, they already know what is the most likely opportunities for you to make a mistake in the problem. And they know that this word, they didn't, they didn't bold print it, they didn't draw it. How many students are already off to the races? They're feeling the pressure. You're on 17. Now, this was not a too difficult of a year, but you're on 17. You're probably running out of time. You're feeling time pressure. Okay, so you're glossing through. What would you miss? They say they're smart. They're really, they're PhDs. I mean, most of them probably writing these questions. Really smart people. They're not just smart in math. They're smart about the way people think. And people go quickly and they don't catch the word irrational. Maybe they do. They caught it for a second but your short-term memory can only hold things for about six to seven seconds, maybe eight, and you're not able to hold it beyond that, especially once you switch the focus to the next thing, which is I'm trying to min-max. 
PQ over RS. So rule one here will say to avoid mistakes, what could you do differently? Stop at the end of your answer and go back and reread everything in the instruction and make sure you have checked all the boxes. Don't lose six points because you want to save five seconds. Okay, it only takes five to 10 seconds to scroll with your eyes and look at everything in there and verify you've hit all the points. Take the extra 10 seconds to secure your investment. You made an investment in answering this question, an investment of thought and an investment of time. If you're not going to spend 10 seconds, it's like a warranty. Go check the words. That is how mistakes happen. That's one of the ways. There are many ways. We'll talk about more of them in the future. That's all I got for this video. If I see you on Sunday, I see you then. Don't forget to email me if you intend to attend one of those classes. Hope you guys have a great day.